Okay, so uh, today we're going to do testing for ions. This is a subject in the HSC that doesn't really get into the underlying chemistry of, of why uh, of why things are happening the way they're happening. It's really just a matter of knowing the ion tests for particular ions. There's a, a limited list of eight or nine ions that you need to know. Uh, there are definite tests for those ions. You need to know what they are, what the results are, and you need to know what order they're done in. So, uh, it's a section of the HSC that's really given over to rote learning and memorization. Uh, and uh, so, in this, I'm just going to show the information you'll need to know, and then I'll, I'll take you through some of the, the little uh, tricks or the kind of the things that kind of jump out at me about uh, the ions tests uh, that might be useful in studying them. All right, so. Basically, there's two charts you'll need to know, uh, one for anions and one for cations, and I've got them, I've got them both. Uh, we'll do the anions test first. So, anions are negative ions, and uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, the test you'll need to do. So we begin up here, uh, begin up here with a. Uh, We begin up here with uh, an unknown, an unknown mixture, uh, and then there are tests that we have to do, and the order of the tests that we do is really important. Uh, so, if you are testing for the uh, for the anions that were present in a, in a mixture, uh, uh, as this chart indicates, the first thing you do is you add nitric acid HNO3, and thing you're looking for there is whether there's any bubbling. So this is the first thing uh, that I would say. Uh, you need to, I mean, you'll need to memorize this entire uh, this entire chart, uh, but if you're in the test and if you're in the HSC or any test and you see the word bubbling, that can only mean carbonate. Uh, that's the only thing. The confirmatory test is to test that there's lime water coming out. But within the context of the HSC, uh, sorry, to test uh, the gas that comes out with lime water, and then that'll give you a precipitate, and that uh, confirms that there was carbonate, CO3 minus. Uh, but uh, in the context of the HSC, if there's bubbling, uh, you can say for sure that there's carbonate. Uh, bubbling means carbonate. Uh, now that's uh, that's carbon dioxide gas, by the way, uh, that comes out of the neutralization reaction uh, when you add nitric acid to carbonate. Now, if there's no bubbling, uh, we've then ruled out carbonate. Uh, we can continue on to our next test, which is silver nitrate. So, uh, two possible results. Well, there's kind of three possible results when you add silver nitrate. You can get no precipitate, uh, or you can get a precipitate, and then that precipitate be one of two colors. Now, if it's a white precipitate uh, with silver nitrate, uh, that means uh, chlorine ions are present. But uh, I just warn you that white precipitate is the trickiest of the precipitates. <laughs> uh, it's um, white precipitate can mean all different things in all different contexts. You really need to know uh, know this chart to to understand what a white precipitate means. But luckily, I mean, it, assuming that uh, you don't go into the HSC with perfect memory of this chart or something like that, uh, there are there are easier results. So like bubbling is always going to mean carbonate. You don't need to know. I mean, you can double check, but uh, if you see bubbling, there's there's not really going to be any other reason. If you're doing an ions test, you see bubbling, it's going to mean carbonate. If you get a precipitate and it's yellow, it's going to mean phosphorus. It's going to mean phosphate. Uh, ions are present. That's uh, that's another one. So that's a gimme. That's easy. If it's yellow, phosphate. If it's bubbling, carbonate. White precipitates are trickier. Uh, if you've ruled out, uh, I might add as well. Uh, so let's say you got a white precipitate when you added silver nitrate. They might try a trick kind of question where you haven't first uh, added nitric acid and ruled out that there's carbonate. So um, You've got to you've got to watch out for that. This silver nitrate result is only valid. You can only say that the white precipitate is chlorine once you've already ruled out that there's any carbonate in the mixture. 
So just watch out for that one. All right. Now, whether there is or there isn't a precipitate, uh, you can go on and um, and then test either the filtrate or the mixture that never had a precipitate in it to begin with uh, with barium nitrate solution. And if you do that and you get a white precipitate, so once again, another white precipitate, you've got to be careful with white precipitates, that's when you get uh, sulfate uh, yeah, as a result. So that's when you know there's sulfate. So uh, there's a few things you'll need to add. You Basically, you add nitric acid, then silver nitrate, then barium nitrate. Uh, you'll note all of those have nitrogen in them. Uh, and um, and you see what comes out. You'll need to know the order of all this. You, you will need to basically uh, know this chart. Uh, if you don't have one already, uh, you can print one out or, or whatever. Stick it on your wall or whatever because uh, you will need to know the chart. So that's that's half of the topic. Uh, and here's the other half of the topic, which is the cations test. Um, uh, once again, uh, there's three things that you're going to add in order. Uh, we'll just go through the tests. Um, all right. The first thing you add is is strong acid. So cations, once again. So these are the um, these are the positive ions that we're testing. Uh, we're seeing which of those are there, and there's a, a limited list once again that you'll need to know the test for. So the first one, uh, you'll need to know the order as well. So uh, we start with our unknown. The first thing we add is strong acid, uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, and we see if we get any white precipitate. Uh, so that's the tricky one, of course. White precipitate can mean a bunch of different things. When you're looking for cations with uh, uh, hydrochloric acid, what it means is lead is present. That's lead chloride that's um, has come out. So, uh, the other thing to know about lead chloride is that if you heat the water, it'll dissolve again, and it's one of the only ones. So, if uh, you get a get a question, not sure what's going on, but they talk about a white precipitate that dissolves when you heat it up. Uh, you can take a pretty good guess that's going to be lead chloride. Uh, so that's just um, a little tip there, is that heat will actually make this one... No, I'm not going to write it. Uh, heat will make this one dissolve. All right. So uh, let's continue on. Now, you can either get that white precipitate out and filter, or you could have not gotten a precipitate at all. It doesn't matter. You can go on and do the following test. Uh, but only, I might add, once you've gotten all the lead out. So these tests is only relevant once you've already gotten the lead out and ruled out that there's any lead in the uh, in what remains. Now you add sodium hydroxide. So we've gone from strong acid to strong base, and there's a few different results. One of them is a blue precipitate, and if you ever get a blue precipitate, we can say straight away that's copper. So uh, you know, it's this particular result from this particular test, uh, which is great if you know that, but also if you have a mental blank in the test and you've just got a blue precipitate, uh, I can tell you now, blue precipitate is always copper. Uh, even a, a blue jelly precipitate is a, is another one that comes up sometimes, seen in some of the past exams. Still copper. Blue, copper. Uh, so that's one to know. Uh, the colours make things easy. The white precipitate is where you start to need to use your brain. Uh, an orange or a brown precipitate, once again, uh, the colour has made it easy. If you ever get an orange or brown precipitate, iron ions. Iron ions. <laughs> uh, yeah, iron is present. So uh, that's the result from that. Or we might get no precipitate, in which case we'll need to go on. Or it might be a, a question that's asking you to find multiple ions in this unknown in which case you'll get the um, the filtrate. All right, so the next step we're going to do, final step, uh, final kind of thing to add, is another acid. This time it's sulfuric acid. So we've got an acid-base acid. I don't know if that makes it easier for you to remember, but that's what we're doing. Acid-base acid, and yeah, with the sulfuric acid, uh, we're then going to get a white precipitate if there's anything in there. So the tricky white precipitate. This one's a bit easier though, because after we've gone through all our cations tests and we've got a white precipitate, there's basically two things it can be. 
we go back to the original solution and we run a flame test on it uh, to see, uh, or we can re-dissolve this white precipitate. Uh, so we can do a flame test on the original or we can just re-dissolve this white precipitate. Some of the questions I've seen involve re-dissolving it. Uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and then with the flame test we're going to see one of two colours. If it's a yellow-green flame, that means there's barium ions present. And if it's a brick red flame, that means there's calcium ions present. Uh, so that's basically all the tests and all the ions. Um, so you can remember some of them by the color. You can remember red flame is going to mean calcium. Uh, yellow green flame, they also call it a uh, green apple uh, flame, is barium. Uh, blue precipitate, copper. Orange brown precipitate, iron. Uh, I found it very. Uh, very easy to, to remember all the colours. It's the white precipitate that makes things uh, hard. That's when you've got to put your thinking cap on uh, and, uh, and know the order of the test. But these are the two charts and uh, know them well and you'll get this section of the HSC uh, without problems.